Good afternoon. My name is Silvia Liska, and in the names of the Friends of the Secession, I welcome you here. Time at present. <laughs> Time at present demands flexibility and spontaneity. It is in this spirit that we welcome and thank Olga Neuwirth and Dominic Gonzalez Forster to have agreed at very short notice, I think it was nine days ago, to have this conversation prior to the opening of three exhibitions, which will happen at six o'clock. I just want to announce them quickly. Um, the um, František Lesak is represented in the gallery space with the exhibition Vermutung und Wirklichkeit and Karima Ashadu with her film installation in the Grafische Kabinett uh, titled Plateau. I, I hope for your understanding that due to this limited time we have until six o'clock that there will be no Q&A at the end of our conversation, but both Olga and Dominique will be present in the course of the evening, and if you have any questions or would like to ask them something or meet them, it is, I'm sure it is welcome to them. Uh, we also received many international requests for Zooming or streaming this conversation. First time, you're real rock stars, both of you. Um, but because of the very difficult acoustics we have here at the Secession, we decided against it. We are, however, filming it, and once you have seen it and agreed, it will be, rep it will be shown on our website and for everybody to participate, because there seems to be a need for it. Our exhibition here at hand is titled Volcanic Excursion, A Vision. The volcanic, vol volcanic, we are all sitting here under the volcano and we are being witnessed by 230 spectators staring at us. Uh, but I really was interested how come the two of you are sitting here because it came as a surprise. I mean, Dominique Gonzalez Forster is more known as a visual artist, although she, of course, cr crosses boundaries, whereas Nolga Neuwirth, Olga Neuwirth is more in the musical spheres, um, more well known. Um, so I saw that they actually last collaborated in 2004 in the context of the Steirische Herbst, creating a room composition together titled Ce qui arrive. Since then, they have not met again, and Olga is seeing this new site-specific installation for the first time together with you, with us, you, the audience. So her reaction is very, very fresh, which I appreciate. You're sporty. Although associated with different formats of visual arts and musical composition, both of you, you cons consistently defy all pre-established categories by principle. In Vienna, both of you were present with your work right around the corner at the Wiener Staatsoper. You, in 2016, Dominic Gonzalez Forster, was commissioned to design the large safety curtain titled Helen and Gordon. Helen and Gordon, where she herself reenacted, we see Helen Frankenthaler enacted by Dominique. Um, it is a picture of alluding to the 1950s, to the girls, the painters of the period, but it was photographed, Gordon is Gordon Parks, uh, the first African-American photographer being commissioned by Life magazine. And I don't think he's here, but his vision is here. Another first is Olga Neuwirth, and we can't hear it anymore. She was the first woman ever to be invited and commissioned by the venerated Wiener Staatsoper with Orlando, based on the figure of Virginia Woolf. It was received with tremendous international acclaim because I just had the opportunity to read the reviews, and I was, wow, <laughs> those were some reviews. Olga herself describes her composition as an androgynous sounds, androgynous sounds, which I think take us back to this um, panorama we are visiting because androgynity is something in the narrow sense, in the widest sense, which interests you both. But let us go back to the time you met, to the promising title, Ce qui arrive, va arriver, j'espère, ce soir. Thank you very much, Dominique. Thank you very much, Olga. Oh, 
Olga. Do you want to do you want to start? Because I think you you were the you were the first. I mean, the first invitation came from you long time ago. So and you know because of of Georgette D and all what happened with ce qui arrive. I think there is a kind of but will but maybe you want to start. Yes, unless it's too what what. What, um, yeah, maybe you want to say a few words like, because I know you from Ce Qui Arrive, and then I, I was desperate to see Orlando, but I didn't make it to Vienna. I was like, uh, so Virginia Woolf is just uh, behind you. And of course, Orlando is a, is a, is a key figure for uh, our non-binary revolution. Maybe we can call it like that, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yes, just, I'm, I'm curious to hear, since I haven't seen the Orlando, since I haven't seen you for so long, like what, yeah, what happened in between? And I'm also, I'm also a big David Lynch fan, so of course I wanted to see. In fact, I wanted to see all your productions, and I missed them all live. But now I have you. <laughs> it's a treat. Well, with our music, it's always hard to keep them up because they're there just for maybe five times, and then the producers decide not to put them on again, which is a problem because then they are lost, and if they are not documented, they are gone. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a, a pleasure to see you here, um, by chance. Yeah. All of a sudden. <laughs> Almost so actually, by actually, chance. Actually, by cha nearly by chance, but it's like Suki Arif. Yes. I got a phone call by Suki Arif, kind of, and says, do you want to see um, and meet Dominique again? And I said, what? Yes. I, said, <laughs> I was in Venice, and our first project was taking place in Venice. Yeah, we So there are it. these strange coincidences. Uh, and... Actually, I said I don't want to talk because I hate interviews and talking. So all of a sudden, I have to talk, but I have to talk to her. So I did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, because in, in when we collaborate, when we started collaborating, actually, I, I approached um, Dominique in 2002, and it was not at all common in my music to integrate videos and visual art in a bigger global sense. It is always, it was a big fight. Uh, and, and, and now, finally, after so many years, it has become a little bit better. And now nearly everybody uses video in my music world, too. But then it was a big start. And you remember there were a lot of yes. problems. But I always liked and I will never forget, because I was in Venice, and I got the call. And I remember, um, Dominique, we were on the uh, on the outside of Venice on a rough beach place where the shooting took place. And we only had this one day and there was no other possibility. And it started a huge storm, a really a gigantic storm. And actually we couldn't do a shooting. And I remember Dominique and I was going nuts. I said, oh my God, oh my God. And she said, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, wow, okay. <laughs> so maybe. I don't we were, remember that. We I were don't. expecting the worst. And then it was like something in Venice like a wind comes, a typhoon, and the, the, the tempest was gone. And we could so film. Should, you, you, yes, and we could film. Yeah. So this is how Dominique is. She makes the, everything possible with good nerves. That's how I remember you at least. And, and you just reminded me like a few minutes ago that the first thing we talked about were dioramas. Yes. And I have no, you have a better memory than I have because I completely forgot that. So I'm, surp I'm, I'm even surprised how well things, you know, yes. match together. Yes, because I, I didn't remember that. So, but first, maybe to just, why I um I, I was intrigued uh, by Dominique, it, like it was around 2000. I immediately felt there is, even I'm coming from the, uh, from a musical world, and Dominique is in an, uh, let's say, in an artistic, broad artistic world of visual arts and photography and installation and everything, and even music, you do the Bashung at this point. Yes, idea yes, yes. Um, I came up with who are artists from my generation in whom I'm interested, who have some common sense with me, even if it's from a different art form. 
So I came up to you, like group already, your group, um, you and and, yeah, and, 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 and yes. Uc. Yeah, yeah Perry and Philippe yes. Pareno, yeah. Uh, I said, no, but I'm sticking to the woman. There's something more open. There's something I'm more interested in. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more, it's diverse and it's freer. Uh, so I said, maybe I can sneak in there <laughs> in this world. So then I have contacted Dominique. Yes. And I was very, I remember I was very uh, impressed and surprised because also for me, the idea of, of the, well, of the composer is different, is, is, is different from the singer or the mm -hmm. musician. The composer is, uh, I think, in a strange way, is something I can somehow identify within the sense of that, let's say, structure and even a kind of curatorial attitude is, you know, you, you're like, you're curating mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds and you're, you, you, you have to have a kind of meta vision of, of the work. And I was, so I was, uh, yeah, impressed and fascinated. And uh, since I'm not, a, I'm not a musician myself at all, well, I started in the past years to sing a little bit and <laughs> Uh, my my uh, small musical project, but there is so there was a real um, and this I think uh, probably we both have a kind of synesthetic mm -hmm. um, sense or or and so it was it was a uh, yeah I, w I was immediately super but then also when Georgette D mm -hmm. appeared and I don't remember exactly how. You chose Georgette and why, but now to me it makes also so much sense. I don't know where Georgette is. In Berlin. I, I, in Berlin. Yes, I'm but both. yes, yeah, you're yeah. still friends? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah also for, 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 um, for Germany, she's really a, a, a pioneer in, yes. in, in, in queer arts yes. uh, and in transgender uh, dressing, course dressing, and uh, as, a, as a singer. Yes, uh, and she still does it. And in in this video at the end, so first she's dressed as a woman, yeah. and in the end, when everything is over, she had this dress to take off, and it was a suit. So it was a dress and a suit at the same time. So actually, this is already Orlando. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so this is also that was always my my big topic. But I, I think I always felt it in Dominique's work. Uh, there must have been something, and I will see it again <laughs> here. And really, it it, um, it's, it's, it strikes me. Again, because also you're working with um, fr fragments uh, and historically loaded up fragments, and you play with them and you put them together in a different context, or, the, or you dress yourself up in the apparitions, which I liked a lot. You slip into other personalities, you become somebody else, because we all have this multiplicity of beings. As uh, Virginia Woolf says, there is no key e ego, I, ich. So we all have many, many different personalities in ourselves. So I think this is also where we met. And then when I saw this work where you said, okay, again, Dominique, I knew it. <laughs> there is this relation, even the unspoken relation, yes. because we, have not, we haven't seen each other for such a long time. And then I come here, and as Dominique um, uh, was uh, mentioning, uh, when we just met again, it's like, we met talking about dioramas. Because when we started to do our project, it was in 2002, and I was composing residence with uh, Pierre Boulez in the Lucerne Festival. And I said, oh, I'm preparing Lost Highway now. So I was interested in what is real and what is fake. So real sounds, fake sounds, where does it come from? What is there, the uh, physicality of a sound and which is a fake sound, a two-dimensional sound or a three-dimensional sound? And then Dominique said, oh, you are in Lucerne. There is one of the biggest dioramas you can uh, see. And so I immediately went to see the diorama in Lucerne yes. due to Dominique. And here we have a kind of a diorama again. <laughs> yeah, because for me, any display device or kind of uh, different way to deal with presentation, representation, and to have another... Um, yeah, like this is why also I, I, I love this space almost as a, as a theater. And I really wanted the audience based piece. But the diorama for me is a yeah, deep fascination. It connects 
cinema and painting and mm -hmm. exhibition in the most, uh, is the best of the late 19th century, let's say, together with cinema, psychoanalysis, and many other things. Yes, like <laughs> but the, to, to pick up on the fragment thing, you know, yeah, um, today I realized that a very important, because I was talking about Katie Acker and her way of writing and uh, quoting and her cut-up collage way as a writer. And I was saying, like, if it, there's a kind of Diego Rivera meeting, Klimt meeting, mm -hmm. but it's also Katy Acker meeting Walter Benjamin. And then I was like, oops, he's not, I forgot him, you know. <laughs> ah, and I spent so many nights in the past three months, like, you know, <laughs> either having, you know, new uh, friends joining in and wanting to bring them in or thinking, oh, I forgot, you know, like it's, I don't know if you have these moments. I think where, when, you, when you're in the middle yeah, of a kind of, of big work, it's like you're driving a spaceship landing on a new planet and you have lots of warning signals at night, you know? And you have always mm -hmm. something saying, oh, I forgot this. Or, I don't know if you feel like this. But. Yes, as you say, if this kind of big works. Yes. And maybe we are also the type of people who are like to make research. Yes. And that material, like swallowing up a lot of material. Yes. And then you have so much material, then all of a sudden you have to kind of filter. Yes. And then sometimes you filter something which you didn't want to filter. <laughs> and then uh, it's kind of sad, but as you say, yeah. otherwise the meteorite, per <laughs> other spaceship, and you're still, you know, and sure. the planet is there, and you have, you to, have to try to land somewhere. Keep the, yes. And, and it's so much, but I think, yeah, it's probably something we share, like the the also a uh, taste for complexity mm -hmm. and for uh, and yes l layers, layers also this kind of palimpsest and like i'm i'm very yeah i get i get bored very fast me too to be true <laughs> i always need to experiment something different like i can't repeat i can't i need to learn and i need to read and i'm uh, but i see you yeah in the same 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 way But which is, I think it's, it's, it's because I had this big problem with Orlando, in Orlando, in my opera Orlando, because I was, I, I'm not making it big now, but I was um, uh, sued by a film company by using an angel. And there was a l long case over months that I was quoting uh, an angel, which this person thought that the only owner is, of an angel is she. So what I much, much more like, and coming back to Kathy Ecker, when I, was in, I lived in San Francisco in the 1980s, and one of my big heroes was uh, Kathy Ecker, and it was her way of an aggression, aggressive, let's say, under a positive aggression, would say, of using material and cutting it up and, yeah. and putting it together in the way she was also influenced by Boros, yes. uh, to use mat to material to, to, to show reality in a different way. Yes. And uh, just use also quotes to, to uh, make an intertextual references. So actually what we hear is, this is actually so wonderful because it's a big uh, new story. And this is also what I think that Kathy Ecker tried already to do in the 80s. And that's what I was really very much influenced by. But in the music world, it's a much harder thing. So for this kind, I really like, uh, especially the classical music, uh, for, uh, I really uh, adore uh, Dominique, that she can play around with these elements in a freer way than I can do. <laughs> no, I think you're pretty, you know, I think you're also doing great by bringing, you know, lots of... Uh, Fields and I was I was very I was very impressed also that you brought Comme des Garçons in the in the Orlando thing well, because also a big fight <laughs> yes? yes yes oh my God yes okay I mean I would thought wow everybody should be have, be happy to have Comme des Garçons costumes in the Vienna States Opera but it was a huge fight it was my approach and they didn't want that at all so it's interesting so there is a different world that's what I'm saying there is a more open world. I'm not talking about the yeah, money yeah. business and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in the, the visual arts, arts. But to just be free and bring together um, artists from different kind of backgrounds, which I was always interested in, is much harder. And it is not considered as 
to bring to make something new together and uh, uh, present it. Uh, but it is kind of taking away the, the musical art form, which is, I think, ridiculous, but that's how it is. But I was yeah. very happy that she uh, agreed because she, 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 told me she only does it once. So there's only once the costumes for, um, for dance. And then there's the only costumes now for... Yeah, she did for Mers Cunningham, yes, the amazing... The amazing yes, part yes, she wants. yes, <laughs> yes. But also, I mean, in relation to... It might sound a bit simple, but in relation to Orlando, I mean, the, the name, you know, the name of the brand, Comme des Garçons, like boys, is like a prophecy, you know. I always loved not only all her approach to clothing, but also just purely the idea of this name, you know, Comme des Garçons, long before, I think it's a, it's genius, yes, you know. Yes. It's really... But, but you also told me it's, it's very interesting because it's of the background in Japan of a very rigid... Um, um, let's say uh, male dominated uh, generation uh, uh, world in her art form in Japan from her background and, and her generation. Yes. So it was even a bigger statement that for us nowadays. Yeah. That uh, that's why she also moved with her um, company. She was also the first woman to have a company of her own in the fashion world in Japan. Yes. And she moved to to France to be Comme des Garçons. Yes. <laughs> So we are our own Comme des Garçons. Well, I'm wearing Comme des Garçons <laughs> since 1986. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> Not a lot, but as much as possible. And, and she also said, which we're coming back to here, I think it's like she always was interested in an art form in between. Yes. Which is also for me the most important. And that's what she also represents in her... Um, not only the costumes for for productions, but of, of in, her, in her fashion, which I think we come back to. It's something which is in between, and maybe this is something where we can't be grasped. We can't be nailed yeah. down. We yeah. don't want to be put in a, a drawer. Yeah. So we go, oh, this is da da da. Yeah. And this makes people uneasy, of course. And it's. Yeah, and it's also all the lesson of the pop thing. Like it's not high, not low. It's something else. Like right. we belong to a. We can we can mix. Uh, yeah, all this sequences and so you're sitting just uh, Louis Fuller is just behind you and to me Louis Fuller is like a is like a magic example of an incredible you know type of artist like Kistler who goes far beyond you know being a dancer yes. or being a choreographer or like dealing with stage inventing relation to light to and I've tried to, yeah, to 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 go. Um, so there is a there 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 is a there is a bit of that. Like she's a, um, she's my yeah. She's one of she's one of my heroes <laughs> because there are so many. But in into this, uh, and I don't know if you if. You, are you are you a fan of the Castiglione? Do you know the Castiglione? Yes. Yeah, and I see a, I see an incredible mm -hmm. line going from Castiglione to Marquisa Casati mm -hmm. to Cindy Sherman through Claude Cain through Lola Montes, like and of course Orlando is part, but all this all this way of. Uh, uh, building your own... Inventing yourself. Yes, yes, inventing yourself, totally. This is some, and I think it's something you, you also somehow like. I, w I was always impressed in the, in also because I think you also play with the idea of the composer, you know, you're mm. a composer, but you, when you, this is also where we are, uh, Klaus here, but you, I think you found a, a great way to also impersonate the composer or I don't know if it makes sense. I think a deconstructing a the composer. Deconstructing the composer. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. Yes, because I was always I, for example when they when I was first photographed and says the, the the image was like how should you be photographed as a composer? It was always on the piano like this. And I thought how ridiculous. It's like like this is not composing. Because composing takes place in the brain and not sitting on the piano like the romantic male genius. So I was always trying to, to make fun of myself, of course, but taking it very seriously on the other hand and deconstructing this kind of 
strange genius of the yes. 19th century, which was always male. Yes. Uh, and especially when I came into the m music scene here, there was no woman. There was literally no woman. I mean, there was no composer. And also, they tried everything to get rid of me. They kicked me out and everything. So, <laughs> but I didn't give up. So, so nowadays I can sit here a little bit lighter. But it was a long, hard journey. And even as I said, Orlando was a nightmare. It just one can't see it. And when the the curtain goes up, yeah, you know, and then the show goes on. But the things which were uh, happening uh, behind the scenes are still very male dominated and it was horrible things happened. But this is what I like because the, you have also political persons. Yes, yes, many. And I felt, you know, it's really like the moment also like in an opera when you have the whole choir on stage, you know, and it's usually like statement moments. <laughs> where it's something I love at the opera when you have the feeling there's more people on stage than in, <laughs> like even here, you know, the relation is completely reversed. Like we have more than 200 people here and <laughs> there's less in the, and I love, yeah, this, yeah, this political power of the assembly and of the, and one, one reason for this, for this diorama is uh, like for me, 2020 was mainly uh, was this huge contrast be between being alone in a room, the screen time, these isolated moments, and then going on the street for for protest, for march, and suddenly finding uh, exactly the opposite mm -hmm. and the the antidote and the the space I wanted to be in. But I felt it was never as extreme than in 2020. So this is when when I when I started to think about. Uh, what was and try to to come to the point like what is what is uh, what is a turning point for me in this in this last year it's really that it it made this space that I experienced I was lucky to have very leftist parents and to go you know on <laughs> to so for me it's a, it's a practice to and you know in France of course. I mean, I, uh, someone said the other day, I never thought about that. I said, France invented the protest and the revolution. I never think about that. But <laughs> I, I, there is a kind of practice of the, uh, as, as, um, as Paul Preciado calls it, the parliament of bodies, or, or Judith Butler talks about an assembly. Or, but there is this real, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a practice, it's a power, it's, a, it's a, um, an empowerment, but never more than this year, uh, this past year, and now I felt it's our, yeah, our space. And then when Bettina told me that, uh, which I don't know, because I don't live in Vienna, that many protests pass around the secession so that it's, a place standing in between. I thought, well, it's strange because it's something I had no, you know, I don't know the city enough to 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 know that. But I, I felt, yeah, maybe it's it's good to bring in. And of course, there is the whole. Uh, it's like for me, it was impossible not to acknowledge the presence of the Beethoven frieze mm -hmm. here. Like, it's impossible not to enter in dialogue with it. And I guess you probably, in this kind of, you know, yeah, postmodern way, we can't, when we, when, we, when we go somewhere, we can't ignore the, the, the context. Sure. And even, even more like we, we, we use the context and we, I, I like to enter in conversation with the context and I almost like in a kind of, judo way, you know, to use the power <laughs> of the, you know, of Typhon and Typhus and the Gorgons and bring them in, you know, with us. Um, but this, this uh, yeah, I think this uh, possibility here to, uh, because at the same time, of course, the, this, this uh, immersive narrative of the Beethoven freeze is something, I mean, still to me, super impressive. But I don't want to be uh, somehow. Uh, I don't want to be smashed by that. I want to. Mm. I want to bring it in. Yeah. Yeah, different. Yes. Yes. Volcanic bubble. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Open it up, mm. and and so, uh, Tifon becomes a becomes a, 
a tribune for the great Leslie Feinberg, a great trans activist and amazing speaker. And I love the idea that uh, a kind of what is uh, downstairs or on the Beethoven freeze seen as the bad or the, you know, <laughs> is here. Uh, yeah. But it's also, it's also here uh, as the, all, because we, we spoke a lot about humans here, but there are also all the non-humans mm -hmm. and even some extraterrestrial aliens. <laughs> and for me, the idea that uh, non-humans have also a lot to, you know, say or be in this moment is also a very important part. So I've had, this is a Lama friend I met last spring and some of my favorite, uh, a miniature shrimp I live with since 10 years. I mean, now she's, you know, she's in her, in her world, but, and, and um, a tree I especially worship they're all, uh, they're also, and of course the baby volcano, which was born now in March in Iceland, and you can, you can still see him growing, so he's not, uh, he's not too threatening, but still he, he's here for the telluric powers. <laughs> well, but this is, again, you, you play with the past uh, and the, the nowadays and the future in a way, and something which not, don't, belong together, belong together all of a sudden. And they become all our friends who support us. Yes. Or maybe give us hope. Yes. They're marching with us. This is what they like, they're, because they're kind of coming to us. Yes. And maybe they're marching with, with us out of this decision. Yes, and coming the through the coming through yes. the door. Yes. Like a volcano. Like, yes, like, yeah. a, like a, I said, yeah, a gentle lava flow. Yes. Like, but, you know, that you can't stop. This I yes. found fascinating with this volcano is when you watch it live, it's like the lava slow. is very slow. But, you know, you can't, once it's on the way, it's like uh, you can't stop it. Well, it had, which it has something frightening. Yes, also. It has, it, 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 it has both. And uh, so Susan Sontag is also yes, here with the, the volcano lover. <laughs> Yeah, but also, uh, it, uh, as you say, it kind of reminds me of the big Morales. Yes, by, yes. By Orozco. And yes, the, uh, and Diego Rivera. And I was very much intrigued when I was kind of 18. I, I was in, 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 in Mexico and especially wanted to see all the Morales because I was very much into politics and fighting. And so for me, Frida Kahlo and this whole group and Rivera and Orozco with these huge Morales giving us also, trying to also to sh show humans um, a way how to maybe I see, find a way to live. Yeah, I think they have a, a real, as paintings, a, a real performative power. Yes. And uh, the Diego, I went like to Mexico like 20 years ago, but the Morales and especially Diego Rivera's really stayed, always stayed in my mm -hmm. head, yep. but I never knew what to do with it, you know, like un until this spring where I thought, it, the, the Saturday afternoon Alameda dream came back to me and I was like, yeah, that's the structure, you know, mm -hmm. like, so the background, the trees are still from Diego, you know, <laughs> and Diego is here, he pictures himself, what I find so great, he pictures himself as a, 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 yeah, as a boy, and Frida is a, is a woman behind, and then she's part of the, of the Alameda the park dream yeah of the park and but it it took it took me 20 years to process the the mural thing i never i never i was always like yeah this is great this is really incredible but how can i you know how and and finally you know i guess it's the same for you like there's things take a very yes. long time to you know it's interesting you know it touches a, a yeah but Something. Yeah, but it's it's long to yeah. But would you see it kind of in like in a, a political statement as the yes, as the totally yeah, okay. no, totally. But from now, you know, I I think it's a trans feminist. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a trans feminist anti racist uh, tr yeah binary anti binary revolution and it's uh, anti specist. It has all this. Mm. I mean, it's yeah, right. All the soup text. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> and uh, Rosa Luxembourg is there as a, as grown up, but also as a child, next to James Baldwin and next to oh, Greta, with oh, yeah. um, Flavio de Carvalho in her back. He's, he's a great Brazilian artist who, uh, in, already in the 50s, did some, even before the idea of performance existed, uh, he called them experiences, and one was to walk against a religious procession. He just walked the other yeah, way right. down. And he, he, had, he was also an architect, he had lots of, and he was wearing skirts. So Flavio uh, is really, you know, very, very, but as, as, as many in here have a, uh, yeah. And I, I found Wojnarowicz, whom I like so much. Yes, so yes, very, and, he's there. <laughs> and Wojnarowicz, David, is looking, is almost uh, looking at the, so Rambo is over there, you know, so they're <laughs> yeah, like, right. they're like facing each other. So there are also many games and uh, one, you know, Morimura, the Japanese artist, is as Frida Kahlo. There are also all this, um, um, yeah, plays, exchanges. Sada Nafif, a dear friend who's here, is here as Yasmin. Next to Jean Willis, who's uh, from, from Brazil, and uh, above, just above Greve Générale. We have, um, yeah, it's, it's long to, to, to tell, like, um, Bettina said it's a, it's a maximalist novel and it's a bit like Georges Perec's, you know, La Vie Mode d'Emploi. Mm -hmm. It's really, you can, you can, you can enter... One uh, room after another. Yes, in, 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 in many, many ways. And also some, some are present several times. Like I didn't, you know, in, in, in this uh, patriarchal representations of knowledge and power, you, you have, you know, you have one Leonardo da Vinci, one, one Kant, one, and I decided that there is no, you know, for me there is no, like, uh, people can appear several times, and uh, it's, not, it's not about uh, making a kind of, so, so it's, in that sense, it's a very emotional landscape. My daughter, who's a big inspiration in terms of uh, <laughs> activism and protest, is also in several places. And yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how and much you courage. like. Mutter Courage. Yes, yeah. yes. Ellen Weigel yeah, as yeah, Mutter Courage. courage. Yeah. Next to next to Catherine Burdekin. Do you know Catherine Burdekin? Mm. She's a British uh, writer, and she wrote this amazing uh, prospective uh, dystopia. Like she's really good. You will you will you will you will enjoy her if you if you start to read her very much. And do you know, how much do you like Alan Moore? I wanted to ask you, do you know Alan Moore? Do he's I have the, to say something? <laughs> no, no, no. You know that he's the one who, he's the one who wrote the Vendetta thing and the Anonymous yes. and the League of the Extra. Because I'm, I like him in terms of, and the lost girl with, and I like, I like his uh, assembly of characters and his relation to magic and also I have the feeling I, I when I read his novel Jerusalem is like he has an ability to connect so many um, he's a true anarchist but to connect so many uh, characters fictions information it, it really fascinates me yeah Who else is there? Are we, are we, are we are, do we still have a bit of time? Okay, cool. <laughs> I wish I what? Of these beautiful dogs, because I'm just sitting always, I'm seeing the ah, dogs. Ah, you sing the dogs, you sing the dogs. And I feel like they are in kind of in Sissinghurst with Orlando, Orlando's dogs. Ah, yeah? Yes, very much. You had dogs on stage? No, we were not allowed to. But in, 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 in Sissinghurst, and you know, in, in Orlando, Orlando is Yes, surrounded it's surrounded with, yes. With Dogs and um, so this is a, this is a, an apparition. This is a Kazati apparition I made some some years ago. So I had to hold the, oh, the dogs, <laughs> and they're very trained dogs. So they're not you know they're very they're very nice, 
and uh, but the the yeah the apparition thing is now replaced by the vision uh, you know it's a, another mediumic <laughs> another mediumic term but actually you could be in all of them that's what I yeah mean. totally so no I feel I feel like this is why this is also why several are going through you know like so the Casati and Lola Montes and then the Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> it's which is funny because my father is not far and like the then you can see the the mother so the Edgar Allan Poe and then the 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 Rachel from Blade Runner mm -hmm. is also one of the <laughs> but I feel yeah I feel I feel like the you know at the beginning you said this, this multiplicity but I feel we grew up I think we grew up in a moment where this notion of multiple personality disorder was still a kind of uh, important thing. <laughs> yes, it's very true. Right? Yes, it, dis it disappeared. It's yes, it's, it disappeared, yes. It disappeared. But, but it was not negative. No. Mm -hmm. For me, it was always, I was always fascinated by, I always felt like I'm really, I have so many, you know, I'm a whole... <laughs> yes, universe. Universe. different... And I don't okay. want to be reduced to one, and whether already not not uh, female or male, but also not in many senses. Mm. And this is something I, I feel is also very strong in your yes. way. Like we we really don't want to be, and we don't want to reduce our inner assembly. It's so I feel. true. Yeah. But maybe that's also maybe we, we grew up like that. <laughs> As a child, I mean, we were kind of, we, I, 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 we once had a talk about that, about our family backgrounds, because we mean, there was open space, we just could be wild girls. Yes. And also we were not kind of, I, actually, I was, I, I was not defined, to, I have to be a, a girl or a boy, I was just running yes. around as an individual through the countryside. I didn't grow up in the, I was a, let's say, like a, a, a wild creature in the woods. <laughs> so then you, you you can, I think, become very creative and there is not one norm how you have to be or... I mean, of course, there are always um, forces from outside and when you yes. start get into institutions or something yes. like that, then this whole thing started. But as a child, I was just like... Yeah, and also yeah. because I think the 70s were very unisex. Now you wouldn't use this, but I mean, clothes were unisex, things yes. were an androgenity, which was, what was a very, you know common yes. uh, idea. Well, not so much in the countryside, I have to no. say. No. <laughs> in the Austrian countryside, it wasn't. There was still the Tindl, where I was the most preferred clothes for a girl. Yes. And I was playing the trumpet, and I wanted to be in the marching band. This was all not possible. So there were a lot of limits. But I mean, the countryside, the Austrian countryside is another story than maybe uh, France in the 19. 60s and 70s. Yeah, France in the 70s, like we were, me and my brothers, we were all wearing the same clothes, you know, like yes. pron poncho and Peruvian uh, <laughs> hat and the same boots and the same haircuts, like they, they had, you know, we all had long hair and so I never felt, you know, uh, in fact, I think it's really in the last, it's in the last 10, 20 years that I've that is, it, had, it has become much more of an issue in a strange mm -hmm. way. Like, oh, almost mm -hmm. as if as a child I was kind of gender blind, almost, yes, yes, you know? Yes, that's very true. Yeah. I agree. Me yeah. Too. Yes. And I think it, it's interesting because it's, it, well, it shows also a, a very a different context, but it's very, for me, it's interesting to, to process that and how suddenly, like 10 years ago, I really, I felt, yeah, I was I was pushed in a kind of uh, corner or, or, or identified or mm -hmm. when I I grew up in a very different way. So this is why I think now the whole uh, trans issue, text writings, is very is is a very is very important to us to to process all that in a different way. At least I feel uh, very. Uh, grateful to many and, and to, to Paul Preciado and others to, to open it again in a different way. For me, it's, it's, it's very important. But I, f I also feel uh, yeah, some kind of luck that I or we grew up in a moment where it was 
also, yeah, there was a, a, a totally different way of, like, there were, like, I find it so strange that Lego became, you know, you have Lego for boys and girls. <laughs> yes. As a child, they were never, I mean, Legos no, were right. Legos. Le right. And many things were just, you know. So how, how things somehow, um, yeah, go in strange cycles is probably also an issue. But also maybe it's a fear. I think that it became a, a fear again, so because there was openness and people become afraid, and as in so many yes. things, they try to uh, narrow it down again to certain limits. Yes. So now it has to be clear again: uh, is it male or is it female? Yeah. Uh, and 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 that's the, that's the sad thing. So now that's why we have to to to, to fight and talk about it again. Yes. Which was actually in the sometimes in the 60s and 70s. Was yes. Yes. I, also, I was allowed to speak up, for example. As a woman, I didn't, I didn't care. I was doing the same thing like my, my neighbor boys <laughs> did. So, uh, but, uh, but again, as I said, I came into an institution here, which means it was not the thing at all. So that this was my first time I, I, I found out limits. Yes. So maybe then I thought it, was, it would have been better to be in like in a film world or in a visual arts world. Yes. Yeah, well, I think we both, yeah. But then we, yeah, we processed it somehow in a kind yes. of, I decided to be an artist. I didn't yes. want to be, you know, male or female mm -hmm. or, you know, French or never, I've never seen that, but <laughs> I, I just wanted to be an artist. So true. <laughs> somehow. So maybe this is a good uh, uh, end word. We wanted to be artists. <laughs> Both. <laughs> right. I, yeah, thank you so much. Thank oh you. yeah, Thank so you, so good Thank to you hear work. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>